Hey guys, this is Diesel from Imagine Your Goddess bringing you a deck profile for Force of Will. I am showing you Blazer Knights today. Now, I'm sure you've seen other Blazer Knights builds. Mine's probably not too much different, but I enjoy it, so I thought I'd show you how I build it. Uh, to start off, the leader is obviously Blazer for Blazer Knights. Uh, he has an ability on the front and the back that magic stones you control can tap for a red. Uh, you can also flip them to pay z by paying zero, but you can only do it if your opponent controls a J ruler. If you flip him, he uh, it becomes a thousand thousand. When he enters your field, uh, target J ruler loses all abilities until end of turn. Uh, and when he enters your field, uh, destroy target J ruler uh, and opponent controls. And then he also has the ability that he gains plus four, plus four, as long as you don't control a resonator. I have never flipped Blazer in this build. Uh, I just use his ability to turn all my stones into slash red stones. Because it's uh, damn useful. Alright, talk about the stones I have. I run nine light magic stones. And I run one little red pure stone. Usually I call red on it. Um, so let's go into what the deck's actually about, Knights of the Round Table, and the creatures. Four copies of Gawain. Gawain gives other Knights of the Round Table plus two plus two, and when he attacks or blocks, rest target resonator. Uh, it runs four copies of Percival, one drop, two, two. Uh, you can banish it to, uh, ne to uh, prevent all damage dealt to target Knights of the Round Table or uh, J Ruler until end of turn. It also, uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to reveal top five cards of your deck and pull a Knight of the Round Table or a Regalia out of them and put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. This allows you to get out uh, Artemis Bow or any of the significant Round Table members, such as Lancelot. Two red, six six, Swiftness, uh, it can pay a red to gain plus one, plus oh. In Magic, they call that fire breathing. And uh, as you choose an, an attacker, you have to choose him to attack first, if able. Um, that just means that you, if you don't want to attack during the turn, it's not that big a deal. But if you do, you have to pick him first. Also, if he swings and his attack is a thousand or more, uh, you do 700 to target resonator. Um, he is sort of the bread and butter of the deck. He kills your opponent's creatures. He makes sure that, uh, uh, you're doing heavy damage. And he's really easy to manipulate up to a thousand attack power. Then, I run four copies of Guinevere. Guinevere the Just Queen. Uh, her ability is, uh, tap and banish a resonator. Draw two cards and discard a card. So it gives you hand advantage. And you can also pay red and tapper to uh, give target resonator you control 400 400 until end of turn. Uh, when it deals or is dealt damage this turn, banish it. I don't care much for the second ability, I don't think I've ever used it. But if you are going for your last hit and you just need that extra oomph, it's there. Um, I also run four copies of Gareth. Uh, the Dauntless Knight. He's an 800-800 for 3. He has target attack. And if uh, this card would be dealt 700 or less damage by a source, prevent it. So that's every time. So if your opponent tries to hit it with two thunders, they're both prevented because they're both doing less than 700 damage. They have to do 8 in order to do anything. So he usually stays alive and last ability is a big deal in this deck. Um... Then I run four copies of uh, Hector, Hector Demise. Uh, it's one in the red for a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, it gives plus 4, plus 0 to target Resonator till end of turn. And you may pay a red less for her if you control Lancelot. So her big ability is pumping Lancelot, so Lancelot gets his ability. The combos are uh, apparent. <laughs> 
And then my last resonator is I run one copy of Gwibber. Gwibber is a 12-12 five cost dragon with flying. Um, but you pay two less to play this card for each resonator you've uh, controlled that entered the battlefield this turn. So you can pay... Let's say you have a Lancelot on board, and you have three mana. You can pay one for a Percival, one for a Hector, and one to play Gwibber. Uh, he's got a lot of value when you play him for that low of a cost. It's worthwhile, and uh, just having a 12-12 flyer on board is usually a good finisher for decks. So uh, I like to run one in decks that play a lot of creatures in one turn. Um... Moving on to the non-resonators. As far as Regalia go, I run four copies of Artemis, the God's Bow. Uh, it gives your J-Ruler target attack, which means nothing for my deck because I don't use my J-Ruler. Um, but when it enters the field, it comes out with two arrow counters on it, or four if you control Arla, which I do not. You can tap and remove an arrow counter from it to deal 400 to target attacking or blocking resonator. And you can tap and remove two arrow counters from it to destroy target addition resonator or face down chant standby card. Um, so basically, uh, it also has another ability that you can remove four counters from it to destroy target J ruler or resonator with flying. But you never get that ability because it never enters with more than two counters in this deck. It is used pretty specifically to get rid of chump blockers, or if you have to, use it to uh, weaken something so that you can finish it off with Demon Flame. Um, it just keeps creatures off the board, and the more creatures that you keep your opponent off balance with, the better for your overall win. I run four copies of Demon Flame. Demon Flame is a one-cost instant that uh, it either does 500 to target Resonator, or it destroys target resonator that was dealt damage this turn. So you can deal damage to something with Artemis, or with a blocker, or with Lancelot's ability, or with a thunder, or with uh, Crime and Punishment, and then use Demon Flame to kill it just because it has damage on it. So that's pretty useful all around. I run four, or yeah, four thunders. 500 damage to target J slash resonator or player. Um, this card's just good. It, to get in that last little bit of damage, if your opponent finds a way to control your board, uh, if you want to kill a creature, you know, big or small, there's a lot of uh, reasons to bother playing Thunder, so I run four. I run two copies of Flame King Shout. It's a three cost uh, sorcery speed, spell chance is what we call it in this game, but sorcery speed, um, that deals 400 damage to each resonator your opponent controls. And then you may put a fire resonator that costs three or less from your hand onto the field. It gains swiftness until end of turn. <coughs> this is a good card because it basically values itself. As long as you have a three or less cost fire resonator in your hand, you're basically playing the creature and doing 400 to each resonator, which is just value. But earlier today I was playing against Angels, and I only had two copies of Flame King shot in my hand. So I did 800 damage to all her, all the flying uh, Angels, and they all died. So, I mean, that's useful too, even without getting a creature on board. It also does damage for when you want to use those, uh, those uh, Demon Flames that we were talking about. Just to show, I have uh, 4, 8, 12, uh, 16 fire resonators in this deck that are under the cost of 3, 3 or under. So, it's definitely worthwhile. Finally, I run one copy of Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment is a 1 cost instant that deals X damage to target J slash resonator where X is the amount of damage they dealt this turn. This card is in here as a fail-safe for when you just aren't getting the other things that you need to get. Your opponent's playing all flyers, they think that they got you on the ropes, they're swinging in with a 12k and they just think that you're never going to be able to get over it, and then you pay one and drop a uh, Crime and Punishment and wreck their day. Um, this deck works 
on the principle of being fast. Turn one, you play a Percival. Turn two, you play a Lancelot and you swing. Turn three, you play a Gwen and you swing. Uh, you know, you're just doing something every turn and you're putting out a creature or dealing damage or controlling the field every turn. And, uh, you keep using your damage spells to kill their creatures or just eke in a little more damage so that you can do just that one extra more useful shot to your opponent. Um, I like this deck. The tests that I've done with this deck so far are very positive. Uh, the hardest matchup I've had so far with it is itself. Uh, <laughs> or some versions of it, like I played a against an Arya Knights of the Round Table deck that it did okay. It did well against, but the life game from the Angel was a bit extreme. Um, but I think overall the deck's fun. It's playable. It might be a little too on the hyper competitive side because people who play against it, their biggest complaint is that they didn't get to do anything, and. That can be a complaint depending on what kind of format you're playing in. So think about that when you try this deck out, build it, have fun with it. And uh, I hope you guys uh, leave me comments and let me know what you think. Tell me what kind of decks you guys want me to do in the future. Because honestly I build decks for myself. So I just want to know your guys' feedback. What you want to see more of. Whether you want me to show you more of the hyper competitive decks that you can kind of see anywhere or if you want me to do more specialty decks I'd love to show you guys uh, some of the ideas that I toss around but either way this is Diesel uh, signing out have a good one guys